Hi everyone, it's Marianne. So today we're doing a day in the life vlog, but really it's a plant shopping video. I'm currently at Walmart. They do have a garden center here, but Walmarts in my area suck. They don't really have much. And I haven't been to this Walmart in a long time, but they do have garden center and it's like right in the middle of the spring. So they might have something good because I've seen a lot of other people find really good stuff at their Walmart. So maybe this one has been better since the last time i've been here i don't know but if not there's a home depot and lowe's right next to each other and right after that i'm going to see a movie dr strange multiverse of madness and the showing is actually at 1 45 it's already like 12 10 or something so I only have like about an hour to do all this so we'll see how much we can get done and then yeah so i'll see you inside walmart it's also a very gloomy rainy day but we'll make it happen some plants at the entrance which is a good sign not the best selection, but they actually have plants. They do have this kids garden bed for $40. Okay. They have music playing loud, so I'm going to do a voiceover. But this is pretty much their houseplant section, not a big one. They have this golden pothos and then just a bunch of cacti and succulents. They did have this though, which, ow, it pricked me. But it looks pretty. It is for $14, and I guess it's worth it if you like cactus. And they also have this angel wing begonia, I think. And they have this mainstay ceramic planter. This is like $2.50 each. They have it in white. And they have it, I think, a cerulean blue. I'm not sure. And then gray. But yes, really this cactus. And then the begonia. They have the begonia maculata. And I think this one is the begonia strawberry plant, which is the one hanging plant that I think that looked good. And a bunch of cactus that is shoved in the dark. That's why they all look so terrible. And they have like fake flowers pasted on it. Not that one though, but like for the rest of them, they have like fake flowers on them. Okay, so it looks like it's mostly outdoor stuff and it is raining. But we'll see if they have some like good indoor plants. $24.97. So this one, I think it's a begonia. Let's see what it is. Nope. Looks like one though. We have Boston greens and some veggies on that side. Lettuce, some succulents. That's one too. For five dollars. I don't know, that's worth five dollars. I think they just like throw everything together. You have like lettuce over here, house plants over here, tomatoes, succulents, got a lot of Walmart. Some hibiscus. Love this flower. Reminds me of the Philippines and Hawaii. I got smaller ones down here. Lobelia. Honestly, there are some really beautiful outdoor plants, but unlike house plants, you pretty much have to buy them every year, at least in my area, because they die out when winter season come. Even if the ones that are perennials they don't all come back. Look at this one. This is so cute. Look at the beautiful flowers. So pretty. Yes. I guess they're like begonias in a way, but I don't know why a lot of housewife people also love colliers. I have another one here. Marigolds. Morning glory, I think. This. They have the pink one and they have the white ones. I killed mine. Like I bought this before because I love pink plants, but I killed them. Got the pollinator friendly plants. These are some pretty flowers. Look at that. So unique. So that is Walmart. 
This is so Maryland. I'm gonna get one. I don't like to balance the camera because I forgot my tripod, but let's try this one out. It smells like old bay. Smells like old bay crabs. I mean, it's potato chips with old bay in it, but like, this is my first meal of the day. I haven't had breakfast. I kind of get lunch before I head to the movies because I just don't want to be eating this and popcorn the whole day. But we're going to go to Lowe's and Home Depot now. I stopped eating it. Now the Home Depot. There's our garden center. Much larger than the one in Walmart. Majesty Palms. A little bit dark here, but this is where they usually put their succulent arrangements, which is terrible because these are succulents. They need light. But that's why they always die out so easily because they shove their succulents in the most darkest of places. But this one looks unique. All right, this one looks unique. I haven't seen one like it before. Especially today is such a gloomy day. Oh, look, they have like a six pack of the string of bananas for $13 and this used to be so hard to find. Succulents can be really pretty though, especially in an arrangement like this. And this one too. It's awfully loud in here so I'm just gonna do a voiceover in some parts of this video but in here in the small plant section I spotted a peperomia frost I believe. This one's $5.00. I'm glad that they're putting like their more uncommon plants into smaller versions for a lot cheaper price and this one's some type of jade succulent I think maybe and they have pothos in the bright light section which pothos are not bright light but they can be and this alocasia is for $13. I still don't know my alocasias but this one seems like a good find. And here you got some bird's nest ferns, really huge ones. And then right here you have a gorgeous peace lily, really huge, wonderful statement plant. And this one is for like $70, which a pretty high price, but I think a good price for this size of a plant. And this one is Exotic Angels Plants by Costa Farms. My theory is they don't really make bad plants, however you feel about Costa Farms but it is their retail partners that don't know how to take care of them once they get delivered to their place. And as you can see here, like they shove all these plants in the darkest of places. And they do require bright light. I mean, some of them don't, but a lot of them do. Here we have the ZZ Raven and Majesty Palm. They're coming back. Beware if you buy one. They don't last long, no matter how well you take care of them. Prince of Paradise, Crotons, and some Parlor Palms. So pretty much your standards. And you got some really good ficus plants here though. And this one is the ficus benjamina. This is a great plant to have. And actually one of my friends bought a really huge one. Don't even want to ask how much he paid for it, but it was gorgeous. And this one has a green and green variegation. And this is called the Anastasia ficus benjamina. So the green and green is like mostly seen on a ficus altissima. But this one is a ficus benjamina and this one looks really gorgeous it's 30 dollars it already comes with a decorative basket pot and this is a raphidophora tetrasperma also for the same price really huge and this is a standard ficus benjamina and what do we have here so it's like cuttings in this test tube thingy mostly syngoniums i did see a chattis candia though and this one i'm not sure what plant it is it might be a hoya or a peperomia but essentially, I think you're just paying for the vessel because the cuttings... Oh, look at this one. A plant essentially died in it. So the cuttings are not really that substantial and honestly not worth $13. So I think you're just largely paying for the container. And this one, they have another setup. This is a gunium. And this one's a Birkin for $20. It's a nice setup. Not sure, though, if it's worth $20. I'm going to wait for them to go to the clearance section. This is like a full dungeon, which may be worth it because it's huge, but I don't know. And look at this beautiful aglonema plant. So 
I don't know why pink princesses have all the rave when there's so many other beautiful pink, beautiful plants, but I digress. <laughs> but yeah, so these are like, I don't know if it's $20 worth, but it is a nice setup. And here we have the Ficus Benjamina Snow White. I had one before, but it's a much smaller plant and it died on me. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get this one, but it is a beautiful plant. It's another Ficus Benjamina option. But side by side, the three, this one and the one that's green and green and the regular Ficus Benjamina, I think I'm leaning towards the one that's on a green and green variegation. I think it's a little bit more unique. And instead are those social plants. And of course, when we see them, we always try to find a sport variegated one. So we're on the hunt. We really want to get one of a sport variegated monstera, but no luck today. Like this one is just yellowing. <laughs> this one's just like a dying plant. It's not a sport variegation. But yeah, and here's some watermelon pups. I got mine here as well for the same size for about $3. And this one, I think it's also about the same price. It's listed as $4.98. But I got mine on sale, even though it was also listed as $4.98. And you also have the pepperoni frost in the smaller pot. And look at that inflorescence. So it's really nice to see that these plants are now being offered in smaller, more affordable pots. And a peace lily inflorescence. And this croton, they tried to give it a makeover by like trying to shape it into a tree. But uh, I still don't know about that. And the uh, hanging plants. They don't have really good hanging plants lately. So it's mostly just the pothos, the teddy bear vines. But this pothos though is gorgeous. Look at that. The yellow variegation is very prominent. More like a Hawaiian pothos. And this is for like $17. But as you can see, they have like the chattis cantias, the ferns, the polka dot plants. Interesting choice to make it a hanging plant. But yeah, so pretty much your standard fare and selection of common house plants with a few stands out here and there like the ficus plants and also some of the peperomias that they have becoming more available and like a few calatheas prayer plants and here's the begonias again on sale and some more from the exotic interest collection which they have given a makeover or just marketing more but it's their usual selection of plants and here's the lavender love this one and look an easter bunny succulent arrangement from smart planet home string of pearls for five dollars i've seen people actually find where i get a string of pearls so hmm, we'll see this is a good one alocasia zebrina i believe based on the stems that's ivory coast alocasia thirty dollars depot was fully stocked but a lot of the usual plants I did love the ficus plants that they had though, and I was really tempted to get the ficus benjamina samantha, I think, or Anastasia, the one that has the green and green variegation similar to the ficus altissima. And I don't know, I didn't really want to buy any plants, but that would actually look good in my corner where I had my fiddle fig and ficus audrey, and that could be like the third plant to balance it out. Because right now I have the thematophyllum and bifinatophyllum in that corner but that one's gonna go outside as soon as the weather stopped being cold and yeah it would be nice if it's like three ficuses in that corner <sighs> i don't know i don't know though but yeah if you're looking for good ficus plants home depot has them now I had to lose but it's like 110 and i have to be at the theater by 145 and i want to get lunch beforehand so it's going to be a really quick trip to lowe's so hopefully we'll get to see good plants and not miss anything we're here at lowe's i only have like 10 minutes tops so we'll see what we can find i saw this one driving up here oh, that looks good huge and they have lots of Tadiscantia zebrinas and golden pothos on the other side. These are outdoors, but again, so pretty. Music is loud inside, so I'm doing voiceovers and they have the outfit ear giant bulbs for like about $14. And the Trending Tropicals collection, ZZ Raven, Baby Fiddles, Baltic Blues, and Global Greens. I'm still not sold with this two, but they're great plans to have. If you want them as part of your collection, watermelon paps, and of course the selection of begonias. Again, not for me, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people would love it. The ZZ plant, and they also have the fiddles over here and some snake plants. And this is, I think, a great find, one that I've been looking for a long time, which is the Brantianum. 
and it's $14 from the Urban Jungle Collection. That one doesn't look so good though, but that was a great find along with this one. Another alocasia that used to be very rare and expensive, and now you can easily find it at big box stores. And again, we're on a hunt for a Monstera Deliciosa Sport, looking at these Monsteras to see if there's one. Again, we failed to find one, but here's a huge prayer plant or Calathea. Really big, I have to like zoom out to see the actual size of it and capture it in frame. But look at that, it's pretty if you can keep it alive. But again, not for me. And look at this, there's a pet rock, a happy one. But this one from the Live Trans Collection, I'm, they're really killing it with their pots and planters. And their plants are usually the common plants, but they're still great, like this philodendron neon and this plant. I don't know what this one is though, but it looks good. And they have the neon pothos too. And they have really good healthy plants and they come with really nice pots. So they're really killing it and really good selection of plants that they have. And this one is a variegated Schaeffleria. It's funny though what they do choose to put as hanging plants because in the long run, they're not going to work as hanging plants. But they have the Moonlight Sansevieria here. Used to be also very hard to find. And another Alocasia. I think this is, this is not a Silver Dragon. I think it might be the Maharani. Not sure. But this is the Zenzi ZZ plant for $11. Also another great find if you love your ZZ plants and you're trying to collect them all. It's nice to see that available as well. And money tree plants, spider plants, great plant to have as well. And they just have like stacks and stacks of plants over here. And they got the Baltic blues here some more. The global greens along with the watermelon pep. And let's see what they have here. The begonia maculata with more calatheas and Baltic blues. And golden pothos and you know what i'm actually looking out for is the pink philodendron didn't really see it but as like with these plants that you see that used to be very uncommon and hard to find eventually it will become common so just wait for the pink princess philodendron to show up but in the meantime you have this plants there's a beautiful golden pothos such high variegation as well there's ferns and let's check out the clearance section at lowe's and this orchid and a lot of succulents and spider plants this begonia maculata uh, looks really sad but some of these plants though can be saved if you want to take the chance of them or have the patience to sneak plants and some of them you can get just for their containers like that succulent arrangement which still had actually good succulents in them but yeah like this one too but I don't know if they're still worth half the price though. But for some of them, they do. But some of them aren't like, you just really no point of getting them even if they're on clearance. But yeah, and some more Chadiscanthias, Asparagus Ferns, Parlor Palms, Majesty Palms, Fiddle of Figs, Ferns, ZZ Ravens, Mormon Steras. Again, checking for sport variegated ones. Calatheas, really huge ones, and this is a string of bananas. But yeah, that's the houseplant section at Lowe's. I actually made a good time. I was in there in 10 minutes. They had a really good stock of plants, lots of plants that I know a lot of people are looking for, like the Baltic Blue, the Global Green Pothos. They had also like some watermelon paps. Zen Z Z Z plants and lots more and a really good selection in there. So Lowe's also had really good ones like Home Depot so good for them. But yeah now I'm heading to the mall to get something to eat and then go see Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. I have like 20 minutes so hopefully I'll make it. This is what I'm getting for lunch. I'm late the movie is about to start but it's okay I don't have to watch the previews. But this is a cheesesteak oh my god it looks so good. But yeah I'm about to eat this one and I also got bubble tea this is the milo bubble tea but i don't know i feel like they didn't put a lot of ice but hopefully it's good but yeah so i'm gonna go eat really quickly and then go to the movie i ate in like five minutes i'm heading to the movies it's just right across the street from the food court though so i'll be fine but that cheesesteak was like 12 dollars. i was like that is expensive cheesesteak but it was actually pretty good and the boba is good but it was like warm and it's like five dollars without the toppings and i got like a couple of toppings so this was like six dollars like mall food is so expensive
I'm about to step out to head to the movie. Just looking for my mask. I mean, I haven't been wearing my mask in a lot of places, but I figure it's a movie theater. We're going to be sitting in an enclosed room with like a hundred people for like two hours laughing and screaming. So I should wear my mask. But yeah, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to give you a review once I get out. But like, I mean, it's a Marvel movie. You see, we'd go see it anyways. But yeah, I'll let you know what I think after I leave the theater. Or putting on my mask with one hand, but I'm going in now. Just gonna pull out my ticket. So I just got out of watching Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. I like the movie, but honestly, it's not your typical Marvel movie, and I think that's good. But I feel like they wanted to do something, but never fully committed to it. Like this one, I kind of knew going to this movie that it's going to be a little bit more like horror. And it was definitely like there's some parts that were scary. But at the same time, they don't fully commit to it. And there's also like parts that they were trying to be a little bit artsy. And I feel like in the hands of a different director, it would have been really, really good. But like... They just never fully commit. They just still have like one foot in the typical Marvel movie and then the second foot in like the artsy horror film style. And then the CGI was bad. It was bad, especially at the beginning. It got better like as the movie progressed, but like especially in the beginning, it was terrible. And as far as acting, Benedict Cumberbatch is a great actor. Elizabeth Olsen, great actor. But the pacing of the movie especially at certain crucial scenes was really bad and i don't know if it's just editing but it's just like way off and it just didn't feel i mean it's a superhero movie but then it just didn't feel genuine or sincere it really takes you out of the movie and then the cameos there's like promised high level cameos but i feel like after spider-man 3 it's really hard to top that I was only excited about a couple of the cameos, but other than that, the cameos were pretty meh. And I know, like, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a spoiler, but like Wanda or Scarlet Witch was supposed to be the villain of this movie. And she is, but like, I love Wanda, especially since WandaVision. And I just find myself rooting for her when she was killing the good guys, especially like the ridiculous. I don't want to give you a, spo a spoiler, but there's like this group of people that were supposed to be the good guys but they just look stupid and corny to me and when Wanda was fighting them I was just like rooting for Wanda all the way through and I love that for her and I really wish that Scarlet Witch would get her own solo movie because this felt like half a Doctor Strange movie and half a Scarlet Witch movie but overall I did enjoy it um I don't know if it's something that I would do repeat watching, but then again, I'm not like a huge Marvel fan. But once it's hit Disney Plus, I'm definitely going to be watching it again. And I really wish that there's going to be more for Scarlet Witch and the Wanda Maximoff character because I love her. I think she made this movie. And as much as I love Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen made this movie and she made this movie worth watching. But yeah, so <laughs> that is my day. I hope you enjoyed going plant shopping with me and then hearing my review of the multiverse of madness dr strange but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one bye but before i really go i just want to thank each and every one of you who watched my spring plant collection video and entered my giveaway thank you so much for all the kind words and support and sharing with me what your favorite houseplants are and i wish i could pick every single one of you as winners for the giveaway but unfortunately there could only be one winner but don't worry i'll have future giveaways and my next one is going to be over on my instagram so make sure you're also following me on instagram at mywaysislife.com for another chance to answer my giveaway and the winner for this giveaway is dun, 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 nina alapati congratulations nina please do reach out to me via instagram dm or send me an email to claim your prize